All right, so we're going to make a foldable today on the characteristics of living things. Uh, so what you're going to need is a piece of paper, a ruler, a pen, uh, something that will show up at least on your paper well, and a pair of scissors. Um, what we're going to do first is we're going to take the ruler and we're going to just start at the top over here on the side and we're going to measure and just make a little dot at three inches six inches and nine inches okay so I just have three little dots then I'm gonna come over here to this side and I'm gonna do the same thing three inches six inches and nine inches and what that does when we measure on both sides it just ensures that we have a straight line when we draw our line if you measure once in the middle you may have your ruler like this thinking okay that looks pretty straight which in fact we can see from that dot it's not Okay, so measure on both sides, get you a nice straight line. And then we're just going to connect our dots here. So you're going to end up, when you're all finished, with four three inch tall rectangles. And the last one. All right, just like that. Okay, that was pretty easy. The next step we're going to do is we're going to do a vertical fold and just fold it right in half get a good crease on it there and open it back up okay now we want to leave this top rectangle alone but I want to split the bottom ones in half so I'm going to take my ruler and make sure I get a straight line line it up with my fold and I'm just going to draw a line right down the middle so I have six smaller rectangles and one large rectangle on top alright so that's where we're gonna start with then I'm gonna take my paper and I'm gonna fold one side down right to that vertical fold I'm gonna go right to the vertical fold nice and straight get a good crease on it and then I'm going to do the same thing with this side I'm going to fold this one in right to that center vertical fold get a good crease on it Okay. So now I've got my folds. I'm going to take my scissors and we're going to cut on this top one with the big rectangle. And we're going to cut right down that line just to that first fold. And then we're going to cut on that first fold line all the way down to my first cut. And we're going to get rid of the corners. I'm going to do that on both sides of that big rectangle on top. Okay, so I'll get rid of those. So now I have this. All right, now we're going to make a couple more cuts with our scissors. I'm going to cut right here on these lines just to the first fold. to make little flaps. Okay, so I've got three little flaps over here now. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Don't cut all the way to the middle. Don't cut all the way across. Just to that first fold. Perfect. So now I've got six flaps on the sides, three on each side, and I've got a big one on top. All right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put our name in here. Now don't write the word name like I did. Write your name in there. Okay. And after you write your name in there, we're going to take this top one and we're going to fold it in half. So the edge of my top fold goes right to this horizontal line on top. Get a good crease on that. 
Then you can close all of them up. Make sure you get a good crease to help them stay closed for you. Push down with your fingernail to get that good crease. Okay, like that. All right, so once we have that done, we're going to put our labels on. I've got one already done, so I'm going to swap them out here. So you may need to pause here to make sure that you get all of the labels that you need. Okay, but you need to have the title labeled as characteristics of living things, and then you need all six characteristics labeled here on the flaps just where I have them. So go ahead and pause and get all those labeled and then we'll come back. Alright, so now that we came back we're going to talk about cellular organization. That's going to be the first part. So I'm going to zoom in here. Okay, For cellular organization you need to make sure that you are aware that the cells are the basic unit of life. Okay, everything that's living is made of cells. Now, there can be unicellular organisms where they're made of just one cell, and there could be multi multicellular organisms made of many cells. People are multicellular organisms. We have lots and lots and lots of cells, and those cells are specialized, and they perform a certain task. Okay, If we didn't have those specialized cells, we'd just be a big blob laying on the floor. Okay, um, so we need to make sure that we know the differences between unicellular and multicellular. The next one is response to surroundings. This is where all organisms react to change in their environment. So what that means is that's a response to a stimulus. Well, a stimulus is a change in surroundings. So examples there, light, sound, heat. The response is an action or a change in behavior. Okay. Now, if you notice, I have cause and effect on there. The cause, it's just like cause and effect from language arts. The cause is what happens, and the response is what happens because of that stimulus. So, for example, if somebody was to come in the room and scream really loudly, okay, you might jump and you might scream yourself. Well, the person's scream is the stimulus. That's the change in your surroundings. And your scream or your jump is the action or change in behavior. Next one we're going to do is chemicals of life. There are several chemicals of life that all living things have. The most abundant chemical is water. The most abundant mean that's what the most is mostly made up in our cells. Our cells are mostly water. But we also have carbohydrates, which is the cell's main energy source. We have proteins and lipids, which are the cell's building materials. And we have nucleic acid, which is the genetic material for cells. The next characteristic, growth and development. Growth is a process of becoming larger. Okay, we know that. Things grow, they get bigger. Development is a change that produces a more complex organism. The more growth you have, the more cells you're going to have. Then we have energy use. This is where our metabolism comes in. Metabolism is the chemical reactions that build up or break down materials. Okay, and the cells use that energy to move, grow, repair injured parts, etc. All of those types of things cells use energy for. And that metabolism can change. Okay, when you're younger, your metabolism is usually faster. Okay, when you have a faster metabolism, then the food that you eat doesn't have as long to create the fat in your body and usually if you have a higher metabolism you're skinnier. Okay, As you get older or if you don't eat a very good diet 
or you don't exercise, or sometimes your hormones level hormone levels are are changing. That could change your metabolism and slow it down, which then it gives the food longer time in your body and more chance to build up those those fat cells. And the last one is reproduction. Reproduction is the producing of offspring. Asexual reproduction is where there's only one parent involved and it produces offspring that are identical to the parent. They are absolutely identical. Sexual reproduction is where there's two parents. They combine their genetic material to produce offspring that are similar but different from the parents. People reproduce sexually. You are not exactly like your parents. You may have some of their traits, which we'll get into in our heredity unit, but you're not exact. You're similar to your parents because you have some of their genetic material inside of you. Okay, so go back and pause or listen to again to make sure that you have everything you need for your foldable um, and get that finished so we are ready to move on. Alright, thanks guys. We'll see you tomorrow.